cisgender people are transphobic, just as all men hold misogynistic views and all white people are racist. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. Red is patriarchy. In the simplest terms, patriarchy is a social system that values masculinity over femininity. This type of social system dictates that men are entitled to be in charge and dominate women. And it implies that the natural state of gender relations is a dynamic of dominance and submission. According to patriarchal society, women- Reverse racism is not a thing. I've been bullied, beaten up, and called all sorts of names in my lifetime, and you're gonna tell me that's not racism. Whoa, that sounds- awful. I'm sorry, none of that stuff is okay. But those are examples of racial prejudice, not racism. That's because racism isn't just about individuals. It's about institutional power. Racial prejudice is not cool, but when a person of color discriminates or stereotypes a white person because of their race, in the United States, they don't have the institutional power to back them up. And say this video was originally intended to be much longer, but had to be reshot due to uh, graveyard teeth she should not be named uh, apparently since that strike still hasn't gone away this has to be more succinct and to the point and that's all fine you know i could have been like these people i was not very socially good in school uh, i went through a lot of trauma domestic violence uh you know i have a uh, Manic depressive syndrome, basically bipolar disorder. So, you know, I didn't socialize very well in school, needed a lot of therapy and shit to get by. That's not very important, but what is, is the, the really bad shit I went through sort of taught me to see myself as a victim and taught me to feel very persecuted by authority. It taught me, or I taught myself basically to to other myself from other people. I thought that because I went through a lot of trouble that uh, most other people have not gone through, <clears throat> that I was fundamentally different from everybody else, that I was very different from my peers. I sort of only really fell in with other kind of fringe element kids. I eventually developed very fringe element worldviews. I was into conspiracy theory. I was into the whole NWO thing and who knows, maybe if I was born 15 years later, I would have been believing in the oppression of the patriarchy rather than in the Satanist Illuminati. You know, I don't believe either of those things now because I grew up, I got help. And one of the things I learned in getting help, the, the fundamental life philosophy I live by, which has drastically improved my the quality of my life, the quality of my interaction with other people, and really the quality of my own self-esteem and self-confidence, which is something many social justice war warriors are very lacking in. They may be arrogant, but I don't think they're very happy or well-adjusted or confident people. Because they've developed this very us-versus-them mentality. They've manufactured in their mind a, a boogeyman, an enemy that they have set themselves up against. And since the patriarchy is not real and society is not some Dr. Evil stroking a cat and steepling his fingers and thinking about how to personally oppress you today, it's all just some nebulous bullshit concept, they've had to discover something more concrete to blame their problems on. Where I might have blamed my problems on the school principal or on my parents who I was always worried about whether or not they would get drunk and kill each other. You know, these people blame their problems on cisgendered, heterosexual, white men. And why do they do that? Because we are the societal norm as they see it. And since they are aliens to this society, that they are different, they are... F they are essentially a different thing. Like, we're not all human beings. It's uh, social justice warriors and straight white men, this false dichotomy that they've made up. This skin color in generals and all that is the scapegoat for their own insecurities. Because what I learned was that I don't have any control over what other people think. And also, 
that I just plain don't have any control over people, and that I can't fix my life by running around insisting that everybody do things my way. Because when you're miserable all the time, you obsess about how to solve that problem. And it's very easy to start blaming people for the way you feel. And it's very easy to keep expanding upon that list of people who have wronged you. And to start divvying up everybody you meet into that friend or foe dichotomy. I could have been like these people. But I learned also that what makes people act out, what makes people a dick, what makes somebody cut you off in traffic or flip you off? What makes strangers mean to you? What makes even the people you know mean to you? Well, I could say that my stepfather, who beat my mom, beat me, tried to kill my dog, got drunk and high on speed and threatened us with knives and had the cops over the house once a week. I could say he did that just because he hates me. Or I could realize that he is his own person with his own problems, that he was utterly miserable, felt like a failure, and ruined three marriages, was estranged from his kids, didn't understand how to deal with any of his issues except for to drink and use drugs, and didn't know any legitimate outlet for his anger except for his own family. I eventually became an addict and a, and a miserable person just tormented by my life. And once I became very much like him, for a period of time in my life, I understood that people who act terribly and are cruel aren't happy. People who are usually very controlling and very aggressive are not happy people. Were you ever told in school that kids bully you because they're insecure, that bullies are, are fundamentally insecure? There's a lot of truth to that. So these social justice warriors, rather than looking inward into how to deal with their problems, have formed an idea of society where there are people you can blame. And you can call these people whatever you want, and you don't need to know who they are. In fact, who they are isn't important anymore. This desire to scapegoat straight white men has become so strong that all concept of individuality, and in fact all concept of being absolved, you know, all concept of fixing the problem is gone, this made-up problem. Because I am white, because I am cisgendered, because I am straight, and because I am male, I cannot ever absolve myself, cleanse myself, of being a misogynist, a racist, a transphobe, and a homophobe. It's impossible. It does not matter who my friends are, or if they're in any of those oppressed minorities are included in that group. It does not matter how I was raised. It does not matter what my personal beliefs are, my convictions are, or anything I do. This is how fucked up these people are. I need you to understand that the way their world works and the way their belief structure is, it is fundamentally impossible for these people to be happy. The only way they can feel any sort of prestige or success is to be victimized. The only way they have to cope with their inner problems, their inner demons, is to torment other people. And of course, the only solution for their predicament is to control other people's actions. They will find no peace until they accept that the world is simply the way it is. And that what change they can achieve has to come 
from within. That they must learn to deal with the unfairness of life and the lack of control they have over other people. That they can only really fix what's wrong until they have some measure of self-love and self-acceptance. A lot of times you're seeing black people, you're seeing trans people, gay people, and other people who are outside of this societal norm. Think that what's wrong with them is that they are not normal. And the solution they've found to their problem, which is no solution at all, is to reinforce in their own minds their own abnormality and to blame their insecurities on what they have called normal, the cis straight white man. It doesn't matter what cis straight white men do at all. They will not be happy until they deal with their own self-hatred. They're projecting. Thanks for watching.